Well, we're very happy to have with us today Ken Kaczynski from Nike. Um, Ken, thanks very much for taking the time. It's obvious that being green, or at least using green materials and green construction methods, methods is very important to Nike. Can you tell us a little bit about where the history came from, uh, why the commitment, and what do you expect to get out of it as a company? Certainly, certainly. Sustainability has always been important to Nike in our packaging and in our product manufacturing, and I think it was just recently that the company as a whole, in the last five or six years, a little bit late to the game, decided that our stores should be certified uh, through the USGBC. So that was an initiative that I took on uh, 2004 when I got here, and that's been an evolutionary journey with some wins and some misses along the way. And there's obviously business benefits to it as well because you save energy and you recycle materials, but there's a benefit to the way people feel about the company as well, I should think. Yeah, a company such as Nike particularly, we have a whole Nike Better World campaign that has sustainability of, as one of the many elements, but Nike is, is extremely passionate if you've ever been to our campus or if you get an opportunity. It, uh, there's lead certified buildings even on our campus. It's uh, being West Coast, very passionate about the environment and energy, both. How do you, you obviously have to change the way that you think about how you're building these stores, but you probably also have to change the way that you think about the partners that you work with as well. Absolutely you do, absolutely. We're very fortunate that one of the companies that helped the USGBC write their policy is called Green Building Services. Mm -hmm. It's about 50 people in the company, real passionate. They're based out of Portland, Oregon. They helped the USGBC write policy for uh, retail and how those stores should be certified. So we knew we had to take on a partner such as that. So we have that consultant on each and every project. That was uh, one real early learnings. And then secondly, I took a team of about 25 people and pushed them through the credential, myself included, at the, at the beginning of that process. Uh, realized that everyone needed to become accredited through the USGBC. So there was a lot of studying and, and some pretty serious tests. This was after the testing got a little bit more robust. Do you find it changes the way that your partners operate, I suppose, as they become more and more, shall we say, into it and realize what the benefits are both to the business and also to the customers? Sure. There was an obstacle to overcome in the beginning. Uh, most companies, the bean counters end up percolating to the top. Right? <laughs> How does this make sense? How does this make sense to me financially? What is this costing me? So we put together some really good analytics around what it costs, what are the hard costs up front. Um, that's going to be in our presentation, but we followed that up with the true energy savings being on the lighting side 40 to 45 percent below ASHRAE 90.1. Wow. We found that within 18 months, the capital that's uh, used on the front end is certainly paid back. So the ROI is so it's fantastic. very quick yeah. ROI, yes. which is yes. a very strong message to people. What advice would you give to other companies? who want to try and live up to the standards that you're sort of setting as your day-to-day -day behavior now. Sure, sure. It's <clears throat> Is it for everybody? Uh, there's a lot of talk and conversation. There's not necessarily a, a competitor, if you will, to the USGBC. So there's big uh, further conversations around that. But if somebody does want to follow the path that, that we do, it's just important that you use companies that have the experience because the administrative work and your processes everything from the architects to the contractors to uh, the consultants. You know, I made sure it was my business that I found people that have already done it. So that's really, I think, the most important component is choose partners that have uh, a portfolio of lead certified projects. Hmm. I guess one of the other things is that when you look at other areas, other product types in, in, uh, in context of being more sustainable, being more green, one of the things that you discover about consumers is that they don't actually really want to sacrifice any of the things that they would normally expect. So people, I assume, still expect the same great experience from Nike, but effectively you're giving them a benefit, aren't you? Absolutely, we are. One of the things we're real proud of, and we've had this program around, I forget exactly how long, but I, I think we are over 25 million pairs of shoes that are recycled. So we have the Reuse a Shoe program, where your old sneakers, and doesn't matter which brand they are, they get collected at the stores, and sent back to the plants and turned into basketball courts and gym floors and even part of uh, the regrind uh, flooring surface in our fitting rooms is old gym shoes that are uh, chopped up with tires and you know, the product has a full continuing life cycle. 
So this isn't just something that affects the way you build a store, it really is the way that the company thinks about itself, okay. almost from end to end, from manufacturing to recycling. Absolutely, that is 100% correct. Thank you very much, Ken, really enjoyed sure. talking to you. Thank you. Cheers.